What is up, YouTube? <laughs> it's your boy Arshin. We're back again with a C programming language tutorial. Um, so let's just get started. So here's our agenda. I'm going to talk about um, Hello World. So, <laughs> so we're going to make a Hello World application. Pretty much every programming language that you guys learn, um, their tutorials will like the first thing that you do, you usually make one file that prints Hello World. I don't know why that's convention. Everyone does it. I'm going to do it. Um, and then I'm going to explain what happens while you run that Hello World. So what's happening here. And then concepts. So I'm going to basically introduce the concepts of like variables, loops, if conditions. Um, I don't know, like that kind of stuff. And then, oh, I'm going to actually probably go over functions too here um, and arrays and a whole bunch of stuff. And then uh, splitting code. So basically, you can either have all of your program in one file, which would result in a mess, and it becomes really hard to kind of debug when something goes wrong. So I'm going to teach you guys how to do that. That's really important. No matter what language you learn, always figure out how you can split your code into multiple files. Um, and some languages, that's really easy. In some languages, that's harder. Um, so C is one of the languages that it's kind of harder. Um, <laughs> And then uh, build system. Uh, this basically refers back to splitting code. Um, because it's hard to split code in C, you have to actually make your own build system. You guys won't have to do it because we've already done it. So once you jump on our code base, it's going to be super easy. It's going to be kind of like already done for you. Um, and then uh, modularized code. These are just like concepts, like how do you write code? Um, what do we do when we usually like make a program? Um, uh, I'm just going to explain it on a kind of like I'm just going to touch the surface here. But uh, what's going to happen in practice is that I'm going to give you guys your own projects. And for your projects, I'm going to ask you to, for example, like design your code first without, like before actually getting to, you know, starting typing stuff in your terminal and like actually writing something. I'm going to have you um, not write any code first, draw on like a block level what your program is going to do, figure out all the logic, and then you come to me and then I'll help you like how to do it. And then you will get to coding. And once you do that, once you figure out the entire design, the coding part actually is pretty easy, uh, turns out. And then I'm going to go over more concepts because I'm uh, very not creative with how I structure my presentations. So, <laughs> um, hello world. So let's make a hello world program. This tutorial is super interactive. So um, this is terminal. I'm going to run a whole bunch of commands here. Let me actually make this look a little bit bigger so you guys can see. I am blind. I can't see myself. Um, and then let's make this bigger. Oh, 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 oh. That, that, that. That, that, that. Okay, there we go. Um, so I'm going to run a whole bunch of commands here. If you don't know what those commands are, it's okay. Uh, you don't have to understand the commands yet. Um, just know that when I use Vim and I get to this thing, I'm actually editing a file. So this is a way to edit your files from the command line instead of, for example, opening up Sublime Text or you know, any other application that uh, opens a file for you. So I'm going to use Vim. And then over here, I'm going to run commands. So if that doesn't make sense, just check the bash tutorial or shell tutorial video. So I'm in my home directory. I'm just going to go to temp. So this is a directory that's just for temporary stuff, So, which is why I call it temp. Um, Every time I want to kind of like test something, I just come into this directory. Um, I'm going to remove everything and start afresh. Let's move this. Ah. Let's move this up so you guys can see. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to make a file called hello.c. And then in this file, I'm going to make a function. What is a function I'm going to get to? So int main void. And then I'm going to open curly braces. I'm going to return 0. I'll explain what that is. And then up here, I'm going to do include whoops, stdio.h. Standard library. That's what it uh, stands for. STD is not sexually transmitted disease. It's standard. And then IO is input output. Anyways, that's a little bit of terminology for you guys. And then print f. So every time, this is going to be your friend when you debug stuff. And it's going to be your friend when you just program in general. Um, hello world. And then I'm going to run it. 
So to be able to run this code, you actually have to have a compiler installed because by default your computer will not know what C is. Um, all Mac OSs usually come with com GCC installed. If they don't, then um, I will sh I will show you how to install it later. Windows people, I still haven't figured it out. I will figure it out. Um, some of you guys are already taking C++ courses, so for that you may have already installed uh, G++ on your uh, laptops. So to check whether G++ is installed, or sorry, GCC is installed, you do which GCC and it tells you the absolute path to where that is. So user bin GCC. So if I go here, if I actually go here in my operating system and then list all the files, one of these is GCC, but right now it's like super huge. Let's go G, 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 G. Ah, okay. A better way of doing this is to take that output and filter it for GCC. So ls rep GCC. Boom. There's two applications here. One is GCC, one, one is LLVM GCC. So just so that you know how it's installed. So let's go back to temp again. All right. So gcc hello.c-o hello. So what this does is that it compiles this program and then puts the output of the compilation file, which basically after it's done compiling, it uh, makes an executable file. And I went over what executable files are in the last tutorial. Um, you can just go on and see. It's very simple. So you can see that it compiled. So right now, if I list out the directory, you can see there's a hello.c file that I just created, which is whatever I have here. And then there's uh, the hello file. And to actually, so some of you guys may not believe that it actually exists. I don't know why. But you can actually see it in Mac. So when you do open, ah, look, this is where they are. Actual physical icons that represent that something exists there. OK, so let's run it. How do you run an executable? Just dot slash and then that executable's name. So what's happening here is that um, you are providing a path to that executable. Dot means this folder. Dot slash uh, means something in this folder. So I could do hello, for example. And I just ran it. So it's basically telling me hello world. Right? What is this percentage? This is because um, I didn't actually send a new line character here. So if I do dash n, that makes a new line. So Let's put only one here. Whoops, I have to compile first. GCC hello and hello, and then hello. So many hellos. See, it doesn't uh, provide that uh, percentage sign anymore because right now I'm explicitly telling the terminal to create a new line. If the program doesn't end in a new line, your terminal has to make a new line anyway, so it puts this uh, percentage sign here just to indicate that that line didn't end. Um, in a new line. So if I put more slash ends, it'll create more new lines. So look, oh, I have to compile first. Boom. So hello world, and then two new lines that got created. Right? Everything makes sense so far? Is that good? You guys are happy? All right, sick. So, boom. What's happening? It compile, it run. <laughs> That's basically what's happening. So um, what is compilation? Your code, this is something that you can read. Int main void, so you can see that it's a, this is a function. This is some function that prints stuff. You know, these are English words that you understand. But your computer doesn't understand English. You have to translate this into machine code, basically zeros and ones. That gets sent to your CPU, your CPU jumps. So this basically um, gets translated into like a file that's ha that has like a whole lot of like zero and one zero and ones in it, and then your CPU jumps onto the first line, decodes that message, decodes that instruction, runs that instruction, jumps to the second line, decodes that instruction, runs it, and does it all the way until your file is done. Like zero and ones in their binary, right? Binary yeah, yeah, so this is a binary file right now. So this hello is a binary file. So, and all of the commands that you run, so for example, ls, pwd, git, all of these stuff are actually binary files that your uh, computer is running. If I do which git, it shows me usr bin. This bin stands for binary. So if I go there, yeah. So right now, if I do ls, you see how like this hello is a different color than this hello.c? What does That's ls because do? ls lists all the uh, files in that directory. Yeah. 
So if I let me go to, for example, desktop. So this is what my desktop looks like. So these are like all the folders and files on my desktop, right? So I can do CD uh, home. I can go to my desktop, right? And I do LS and it shows me all the stuff that are here in the desktop. And that's my lease agreement. Anyway, um, so we're back here. Um, I ran the program, so you can see that this is basically a binary file. And all of your binary files, like most of the binary stuff that you install, are going to be on user slash user slash bin or slash user slash local slash bin. Um, and let me actually go to user local bin. If I do ls, you see there's like a whole lot of things that are all of which are executable, right? And all of which exist in my path. Um, you will understand what path means if you look at my past tutorial. But basically, that's um, if something is in your path, it means that you can run it from anywhere. So, for example, like Xcode proj is in my path. So, if I do Xcode proj, it means something. Like it doesn't say command not found. If I type in something random, random command tells me command not found, right? But it doesn't say that for Xcode proj because that exists and it exists in my path. <coughs> All right, let's go back. Um, so that's basically the compilation process. It's super complicated. You, some of you guys might actually take a compilers course. Um, so you will get to know more about it. But for now, just know that it basically gets translated into code that your CPU can understand. Boom. So let's go over some, some concepts. Variables. So what are variables? In C, there's uh, you can actually declare variables. So um, you have you can have different kinds of variables like integers. So int standing for integers. Uh, you can have char for characters. You can have bool for booleans. So this uh, means it can be either true or false. Integer means that it can have numbers. Characters means that you can have characters, right? And then you can have, um, other than this, uh, yeah, long, you int 64, you um, int 8, and like a whole bunch of other stuff. So I'm going to um, explain what these are. So to declare a variable, you first say what type it is. So for example, if I want to have some variable called i, so int i. So you de declare what type that variable is, so int, integer here, and then int i. And you should always end all of your commands with a semicolon. So as you can see, this is a function dec declaration, so it doesn't need a semicolon at the end of it, but every single line within it has a semicolon. It's kind of hard to see. If I, maybe if I go on it, you can see it, right? So int i equals 0. So I'm basically initializing this variable to 0. And by the way, if I change this and compile this code and run it, whoops, um, let me actually npcc hello and then do an n. Okay, what this does is that it does have, like it compiles my code, produces the output, and runs that command in one line, right? So in batch, you can basically put and 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 string a whole bunch of commands together, and it'll start uh, executing them from the first command, second command, third command, all the way till the end. If at any point one of them uh, fails, it'll stop. So that's what the and operand does. So I compiled it and I ran it, right? Wait, what? Looks like, oh, I, I don't think I saved it. Okay, let's run it. Boom, you can see that as I change stuff here, um, the output on the other side changes too. Hello, Arshan. Boom, hello, Arshan world, whatever. No, this makes sense. All right, so you can also um, print this variable. So for example, let me show you how. So printf, and then value of i is, and then I can put something called a string formatter. So whenever you put a percentage inside like double curly braces, sorry, double quotes, 
Um, that means that this is a placeholder for a digit, which these stands for digits. Um, and then I can put like a new line here. And then if I put any of the string formatters in my actual string, then I need to say what is the um, digit that is going here, right? In that case, I just want to put i to go into that digit, right? So what do we expect this to print out? The value of i is zero. Boom! And it does that, right? And you can do math, quick maths. So like i plus i, sorry, i equals i plus i, right? Obviously this doesn't do anything because I'm adding zero with zero. But let's add maybe like one to it too, right? Whoops, let's run this. Uh, value of i is 1 because I added it with itself and then I added it with 1, right? Um, I can do multiplication. i <coughs> equals 2 times 5, right? And let's see what this does. i is, oh, sorry. What the hell? Okay. Um, uh, what does this do? It basically calculates the value of i. 2, 2 equals 2, I'm sorry, i equals 2 times 5. And then if I run this again, you can see that it's 10. So you, multiplication works, division works too. If you don't believe me, let me just run it again. i equals 10 over 2. And then you run it again. Boom, it's 5, right? And then you can have negative bit, uh, values. i equals negative 1, 2, 3, 4. Or 1, 2, 4, whatever. Right? So all of this works. Um, one quick thing is that because i is an integer, um, it can only have integer bit values. So if I have i equals 3, and then I do i equals i divided by 2, right? Um, this is trying to divide 3 by 2. When I compile it, it tells me it's 1, not 1 and a half. Why is that? Because i is an integer. Um, so what ends up doing, what, what ends up happening is I just guess rounded down, right? Let's do i equals, sorry, oh, to, so you, how do we have non-integer values? Good thing you asked, we have floats. Sorry, floats, <laughs> right? So this is another data type. Float i equals three. So now if you do this, if you do i equals i divided by two. By the way, you don't, you can, like I already, I can already compile this. I don't have to actually put a tab here to make all of my lines line up, that's for nicety um, but you know usually when you have like curly braces you indent your code that's for code re readability in some languages these don't exist so for example in Python there is no such thing as curly braces or if there is they're used for other stuff and uh, you actually have to use tab uh, to basically indent your code ah <sighs> okay oh interesting it says this D can only accept integers. So I should change it with f. The compiler is already telling me. So I change it to f. And run it again. It says value of i is one and a half. Yay. See, this works. All right, cool. Um, so that's integers. And then you can also have um, arrays. So you can have int i equal to equals Actually, I forgot how to initialize an array as your firmware lead. Oh, look, I was looking at right before this tutorial. <laughs> oh, there you go. This is how you declare it, and this is how you initialize it. Amazing. So let's copy paste code from internet. This is what we all do. Um, oh, shit. I didn't copy it. Um, boom. Right. So what is happening here? I'm defining an array of integers, right? So point is a variable that holds six integers in this case for me, right? So um, if I want to use, so in this case, let's see um, how I can initialize it. I do point equals one, two, three, four, five, six. Make sure you end it with semicolon. And then I say value of the first item of p is 
And then I'm going to change this to D because I have integers there again. Um, let's expand this a little bit. All right. And then I do P subscript 0. So you're basically saying the 0th item of P because uh, array started 0. This is a real programming language, not like MATLAB. Um, <laughs> yeah, you basically are seeing what is inside the 0th index of P. When you run this, it doesn't work. <laughs> Why doesn't it work? It says use of on, oh yeah, because it's point. It's not P. Oh no. Why isn't this working? And point six. What if I just declare it and initialize it in the same line? Maybe that will work. Yay, it worked, right? So that's how you initialize pointers. Can you or sorry, points. And um, I think you can. Let's go back to the tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Guess not. Um, or it may be some way of doing it. Um, honestly, every time I'm doing this, I just look at previous code that I wrote. <laughs> so you don't really have to remember all of this, especially C has like a lot of different like nitpicky ways where you can like declare stuff and assign stuff. So what you end up doing is to just, you know, you end up not caring about these stuff a lot. And usually, right now I'm using Vim, which is very bare, bo bare bones, it's not helping me. If you use any IDE, it'll have code completion. So you end up making, not making most of these mistakes. Um, but right now it's very easy to like switch back and forth between these two pages, which is why I'm choosing Vim for this tutorial. All right, so I have, we have integer 0 0.6, blah, blah, blah. So another way that you can do it, which can be a little bit tedious, is to basically do point, point, and then zero, right? So this is now a variable. You can assign stuff to it. So at zero with index, I'm gonna put one. Right? And if I compile this, please work. It worked. Nice. <laughs> so you can individually go and like maybe at the fourth location I want to put five. Right? Oh, I'm printing the fourth not printing the fourth location. <coughs> Boom! Five. There you go. Alright, so that's a raise. You can have Wait, um, so then what if you printed um, points at three, but you don't have anything at three? Um, it's some. It's, it's going to be probably some random crap. Oh, it initializes everything to zero. So that's just the compiler's way of doing things. So um, what happens if I declare something and don't initialize it? Int i period or semicolon, whatever. And then we can just put i here. Let's just run this, see what happens. Oh my god, what is that? That's random crap at that memory location. So C doesn't really initialize everything to zero. So expect to um, always be sure to kind of like initialize your variables when you are doing stuff. Otherwise, they will have random crap. And you're like, where did this number come from? And you won't know. So um, OK, so that's variables. Whoops. So let's close that because I can never I never use help, I know everything. Um, okay, variables, how to print stuff, types of variables. We got types of variables. Let's go through another type, which is useful, and that is char. What is char? Char is a character. So A can hold one character. In this case, I just want my variable name. Let's name it something more, so Arshin. I don't know why I would set my name, but whatever. Arshin is a character that holds the value of B. And this is how you define characters. You put single um, quotes. Uh, double quotes are for strings. And these are strings, right? Um, you'll learn about it later. But for example, in this case, I want to print this value. So value of Arshin, so I'm auctioning myself, is. <laughs> So let's see what this prints. Okay, it tells us that S is for strings. You see. 
So I'm going to use C. Boom! It says value of Arshin is B. So, any takers? No? It's okay. <laughs> and then you can have multiple characters, which is char sum or the multiple characters. Right? So I can have an array of characters. So let's do, for example, an array of four characters. And I can initialize it like this. Arsh. I'm very creative with my examples. So now you can change this to S because it's multiple characters stringed together. Right? So I can try printing this out and see if it works. Yay! It works, right? So what if you try to set it to like longer stuff? And try and compile it. Oh no, it says array is it's initializing string for char array is too long. That's because you're trying to fit this big ass thing into something that can only hold four characters. So don't try and do that. Right? What if I set it to something smaller? I don't know what happens. Let's see what happens. Oh, just say R. That's it. Okay. And what happens if I try to print that specific? Ah, whatever. You guys can like do ah whatever. Let me just do it right now. Value of char um, four or like the fourth char is so let's just dereference that fourth character only. And then remember arrays start at zero, so now you have to put three um, instead of four. <sighs> what is this? Oh, I'm still <laughs> Still setting it to like a big value. So notice that I'm only initializing the first two characters and I'm asking for the fourth character and I want to see what it is. It's nothing. So it didn't get initialized or something. All right. So that's how you have characters. And then um, this is kind of annoying because every time you want to have strings, you basically have to um, exactly know how long that string is. How do you? not do that <laughs> and for now I'm gonna just say this um, we will go over pointers later in this um, tutorial but you can do char star this is basically def defining a pointer uh, I'm gonna explain what that is but for now just know that you can do char star long ass string is this is some long ass string can I put emojis here? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Let's see what happens if I try to print, print it. Oh. No oh, I'm not printing yeah. anything. Oh my god. Print half. <coughs> so if you guys ever wondered why car is not working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because of me. Alright. No no oh shit, <laughs> you guys are catching my errors before. Oh no! What is this? Oh, it is. Oh, it's just a warning. But look! Oh my god! Emojis! This is so sick! Okay, be sure to include emojis in your log files. Alright, sick. It's sending me a warning because it says treat this string as an argument to avoid this. So, um, this is just best practice. So, whenever you want to pass in, don't just pass in variables to printf, always pass in like a literal. This is called a string literal. Whenever you put two quotes, two double quotes, that is called a string literal. And then you can put S, right? So the are well, if you're only printing one thing, you can just put S. So that way it won't give me that um, ugly error or a warning. And then you can put other stuff. This is me. This is real. This is me. Anyone remember Camp Rock? No? Yeah. Not for your generation? OK. All right. Ah, that's strings. Okay, let's go through other stuff. Functions. Functions are really cool. Why? We're going to see. So you can have your, um, uh, similar to how, you know, you guys took, I don't know, functions in high school. It's something that has an input and provides an output. So what is a function? Um, it's very similar in C programming. It's basically a block of code that takes an input and then does a whole bunch of stuff, and then provides an output for you. So here, um, let's make a function, int add 1. And then 
this is how you declare a function, right? So you tell it uh, with what value it's returning with. So add one will return an integer, right? And then you pass in, you declare the kind of variables that this function takes. So int i, right? And then curly braces, yay! And then I'm going to return i plus 1, right? And then let's see what happens. So I'm going to determine, I'm going to set some variable number. I'm just going to say an int number. And then I'm going to run add 1, right? But add 1 needs to have some input. So I'm going to set that input to 4. I'm going to print what that is. Print number is slash d and then slash n number and then I'm going to put print f because print doesn't work. Alright, number is 5, yay it works, right? So now um, I can have int add two numbers. By the way, you can either camel case your functions, so add one to this number, like something like this, or you can, un like this is called um, snake case or something, I don't know what it's, what it's called, but you can basically put like underscores between the words. And uh, in Midnight Sun, our coding style standards require you to do this, because this is shitty and unreadable. I don't know why people do it, people do it to just be hipsters, that's bad, never do it. Yeah, sorry. Um, and then int i, and then int j. So this is an example of a function that takes two inputs. You can also have functions that take no input, main being one of them, right? It says void here, but void, I can, if I remove void, it'll still work. Um, it's best practice to post, put void here, because if you don't, um, that's kind of advanced, so I'll explain it later. You guys will just get confused. But um, return i plus j, so add two numbers. <clears throat> and added number equals add. Da, 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 da. Okay, and then two plus two is four minus one. That's three. What what does what does it say next? Quick maths. A. Hey. <laughs> this is an interactive tutorial. I want you guys to like sing along with me. Um, add one. Oh, it's because I'm calling this function, but I renamed it up there. So I'm just going to delete it. Yay, number four, right? So that's function. You can also have functions that return characters, or you can have a function that returns a string. So a string is basically a character pointer. Um, we'll go over what that means. But basically, um, so you can have a function that, for example, say hello. So it takes no inputs. So because it takes no inputs, just put void here, just in case. Just in case, yeah. All right. And then you return hello, right? And then I can just call that function directly inside here. So that's another way of doing it. Hello. So what's happening here is that printf is going to try and print this. And it's going to see, OK, what's the variable here? It goes here. Compiler's like, oh, this is a function call. Let's see what it is. It calls this function, and then whatever this function returns, it passes it into this S, and it will greet us. Oh, wait, sorry. Forgot to save. But yeah, OK? So you can have functions that um, return character stars or strings, right? So that is your function. Let's see, what, am I, what else am I talking about? Conditionals. So. You have stuff like if, right? If. So what is if? If is a conditional in C. So basically, this is how it works. You do if and then parentheses and then um, squiggly braces thingy, <laughs> curly brackets. Um, and then whatever you put inside this bracket, if that is true, it will execute this thing. If it's not true, it will skip this block and it will continue, right? So I can simply just put true here, right? And then do printf. This 
is executing. Right? And then let's try and run that. Oh no. It's, oh, true is not in, defined? Oh. So the keywords like true and false in other languages are by default defined. Here in C, true is basically, um, I think, uh, zero, one. zero or one or something. True is one. But um, in order to include it, there's you have to include something for true to work, and that is std bool. I think, yay, it works. See, so um, and then you can also try like just printing true. So let's say a is true, right? And then let's print. A is, let's hope that this is a digit, I guess, um, and then A, right? Whoops. Let's see what true is defined as, and it says undeclared identifier because I should do bool A. Oh, so true is one, and then false is probably zero. Yes, it is zero, right? So bool is another data type. It can be either true or false. You can define your own data types because usually you're just not working with numbers and strings by default. There are more, more things that you work with. So <clears throat> is this recording? Yeah, it is recording. Oh my god, my laptop's dying. Mm. <laughs> can you plug this in? All right, all right, all right. There we go. Uh -huh. And then let's do untie this a little bit more. All right. All right. Go. Beautiful. All right. Yay. All right. No worries. See you later. Um, okay. So we define, we explain what, what functions are. And there's one important function in um, C, and that is main. So this is the top level function that your program runs in. So main is a um, kind of a special keyword, if you will. So this function is the function that runs um, all of your program in, um, and that's usually the case. And even if you take a look at our Midnight Sun code, even the code that we have running on our um, kind of microcontrollers. So let me actually take you there. So box shared firmware. This is our entire code base. So let me actually scroll up so you guys can see. It's like a big project, right? But every single project, so you can see, for example, Lights Control, this is the project that I made. And you can see that there's source, and these are where, where all your code is. Um, and you can see that there's one file called main.c, and that file defines everything, right? <coughs> so this is a big project. I don't expect you guys to understand everything, which is why I have this tutorial. But what happens here is that you have, uh, or sorry, I have the main function here. Right, int main void, which is the same thing that I have over here. This is the same example, but on a bigger project. And the entire program is running in a while loop. So I haven't explained what while loops uh, and for loops and if conditions are. Um, so I mean, if I just did, but um, so the entire program constantly runs in a loop because um, usually, if you guys have done any personal projects, um, usually your projects include uh, kind of files that you run and then it exits, right? But in an embedded systems, your board, for example, the lights board, always listens on um, the CAN bus to see whether the driver pressed, for example, the uh, button to turn on the lights. Your batteries, uh, you have the battery protection system. There's 36 cells in the battery. That program is always like looking at the voltages of every single cell and it checks whether it's um, over voltage or under voltage, and then it does something based on, based on it, right? So it'll get really cool once you get to those um, parts where you are actually like running code that runs on actual hardware. Um, 
but all of those programs and pretty much every single code that we write is going to be in a uh, while loop that just constantly executes. Okay, so that's it for while loops. Um, let's see, let's go to temp again. All right, perfect. So here um, I defined if. Similarly, you have else. So you can have if true, do that. Else, do this. So for example, this is Arshin. I don't know why am I not creative with naming at all. Um, this is else condition body thingy. All right, so we're going to um, go through and run this. Um, as you can see, um, I don't know what the problem is with this. Oh, it's because I'm passing A, whereas I'm not actually needing A in this string. Right? So this was true. So this line executed, this line didn't. And then afterwards, if I put another print statement, it will execute that line because it comes out of the if statement. So out of the if statement. So let's do this. We can see um, it prints both of them. I just didn't print a new line between these two, which is why it kind of strings them together. Right? So there's if condition, else condition, and if I change this to false, this will run. Right? Let me just show it. Boom. So all of this stuff um, are kind of like the basics. And then um, let's uh, do loops. So there's two kinds of loops in this uh, language. There's for loops and then there's while loops, right? So what is a for loop? Loop is a block of code that you want to execute multiple times. So for this variable from zero, and then this variable goes up to maybe like four, right? And then in every iteration of this loop, you just want to increase this, uh, increment this counter by one, right? I want to do something. And that thing is print hello, for example. And let's put a new line so that we get a new line out of every single print. Let's run this. Oh no, what happened? Oh, print F, sorry. This is not Python. In Python, print is the default thing you run. See, you can see that it ran hello four times, right? So what is happening here? I declare my counter. So you can see that I did int i, right? Similarly, I could have done and I could have declared my counter here and then initialized it to zero here. So that would have been a different way of running it. And then what happens is that the program executes whatever is between these two curly braces, these two curly braces, right? And every time that that is done, it will go ahead back to the beginner, beginning of this line. So let's say you execute a whole bunch of lines. Um, it will go all the way to the bottom, and then I'll come back on the top, check if, if this condition is true, right? So if i is still less than 4, it will continue running, right? So, um, and then... After this loop is done, it will go ahead and execute here. So what happens here is that i is 0 at first, then this executes, and then i becomes 1, executes all the way up to 4. Once i is 4, 4 is not less than 4, so this becomes falsy, right? So it exits the loop, right? So to demonstrate that, I can actually print the value of i. Let's run this. Hello, 0, 2, 1, 3. Okay. So that is for loops. Similarly, you can have while loops. So while this can, whatever condition that you put here, um, the code between these curly braces will continue to execute. So for example, I can print hello, right? And then, whoops, whoa, whoa, what's happening? Where is Vim? Oh my god, my computer is terminated. Nah, it's okay. 
then oops then oh that's it okay there we go so um so while this condition is true keep executing this right so let's do i um i equals like for example four right so while i is still bigger than zero print hello and then increment i so increment means add some value so in here i'm adding one to it right yes you're right <laughs> sorry i keep forgetting oh my god <laughs> why is this happening i'm caught in an infinite loop why? Because while i is bigger and I'm incrementing i, so i keeps going up. <laughs> so I should have decremented it. What's cello? Oh, it's <laughs> that's because when I do control C, um, it <laughs> terminates the program. So four hellos. See? So I was going to demonstrate what an infinite loop is, but <laughs> I already made a mistake, so you guys got to see it. So that's a while loop, right? Um, so those are your loops. And then functions, conditionals, loops, and we have everything. So a splitting code. You usually want to split your code in multiple files because um, this is pretty much to kind of have easier readability and a whole lot of other um, kind of benefits that come with it that I'm going to talk about. And then so let's say actually let's want to have another file, right? So I'm going to make another file called um, goodbye.c, right? So I define a function here in this file, um, not def, that's Python, um, void. So void means that this function doesn't return anything. Say goodbye, right? Whoops, uh, okay, there we go, right? And then I do print f, goodbye, right? Uh-huh. There we go. And then to use that, we have to include that library. Stdio.h, right? So we want to be able to run this function over here, right? So let's try and run this code and see what happens. GCC hello, blah, blah, blah. Oh, it says, oh, well, first of all, <laughs> I forgot to put semicolon. Let's run it. It says say goodbye is not here. It says um, like it's an undefined symbol. That's because um, GCC or my compiler doesn't know about that file because I haven't passed in that file to it, right? It only knows about hello.c. It doesn't know about goodbye.c. So I'm gonna put goodbye.c here, right? So now it compiles both of these files. So it will know where all the definitions are and then it will produce the output as hello, and then it runs it, right? So you see that it worked, because it, it says um, implicit declaration of function invalid in C99. Um, wait, did it work? It did work, right? But uh, it gives me a warning, because it says it, this is an implicit declaration, because if someone else is, is going through this code, they don't know where say goodbye is defined, right? So that's bad. Um, it, you should basically every time you're running code here, there there should be some always some include um, guard at the top that basically shows you where that function is coming from, right? Um, there's two ways to get around this. One is to define this, say goodbye. So if I declare it like this, I won't get that warning anymore, right? But in practice, basically this is just because when the compiler reach, reaches here, it needs that this function has been declared within this file. So it may be defined in another file, but it's been declared in this file. But what we do in practice is that for that file, we will make another file called goodbye, sorry, goodbye.h, right? So we can put the declaration of that function here. So void say goodbye, that will be in this file, right? And what I'm going to do is that I can include, and I'm going to put goodbye.h. So what is a .h file? This is also called a header file. 
Header files are um, serve a lot of purposes. Serve a lot of purposes. What happens in the compiler is that once it once you put this include here, it will literally go ahead in that file. So in this case, goodbye.h file and copy all of its contents over here, right? So remember how we did um, this declaration definition previously over here. Um, what the compiler does is that it removes that and then it will um, replace it with whatever is in that file and it just like adds it to the to this file and then it compiles the whole file together, right? So if you do that and run this, you can see that it still works. And then you can run your entire uh, function here. So you can basically run a, write a whole lot of other functions. Say, uh, what are you doing? What are you doing tonight? <laughs> hey, what's up? Well, you can't do that because you need to connect them. And then in the body of that function, you can send your message. Right? All right, sick. So now you guys know how to basically split your code into other files. And then for each file, every function that you are exposing from that file, meaning that um, when you are making this file, um, other people or yourself might want to run this function in that file. But there might be also the case that you might want to write some functions here that these public will. You might want to write some functions in this file. So void um, private function others can't call, right? So maybe you want to write some private functions over here to simplify your code because you usually want to break your code down into um, very descriptive functions that exactly tell you what that function does. Um, and then um, that basically breaks down your application and makes it simpler. So over here, I maybe this function calls the private functions that others can call, right? But you don't want your um, the people that are using this function to be able to call this function. And why is that? Because when you develop your own modules, you might want to change your implementation later, right? But let's say you're developing a library. Other people are going to rely on your library to work, right? If you change the way that your library is meant to be interacted with, then other people, you know, you will break other people's code because your library will change, right? So why, why do we do this? Um, this is because, for example, in Midnight Sun also, we have, so let's go over our um, um, firmware project again. Uh, GPIO.C. So for example, this is one of the libraries that you guys will use. This is the GPIO library. GPIO stands for General Purpose IO. It's basically like uh, some of the pins that are coming out from the microcontroller. For example, in the lights project, I literally use this file to turn on and off the car's lights, right? Um, you guys will soon, like as soon as I give you your own projects, you will see what GPIO is, what UART is, what CAN is. There's a lot of stuff that you guys have to learn. Um, and so in this file, you can see that, for example, this GPIO init is a public function. Everyone can access this. GPIO init pin is a, a public function. Um, oh, this is not a good example because that doesn't have any private functions. Um, let me show you lights GPIO. I'm pretty sure this one will have some private functions. So um, this is an example of a uh, private function because um, what I am exposing from this file, let's go to lights GPIO.h, right? This is a header file, for example, that I made for this part of my code, right? So you can see that lights GPIO init is defined here and lights GPIO process events. So whoever that wants to use this file as part of the project, let's say there's like some 
library that you want to include. This is where you look what that library does, right? It doesn't show you any implementation because usually you will not have to look at every single line of how something is implemented to be able to use it. For example, in this case, if you want to use lights, you just basically pass it this settings object, right? And then you don't exactly need to know what is happening inside. And um, chances are that the developer of that library wants to move things around inside his code. And he wants to maybe like add support for more stuff and he might want to like rewrite his code. So if you call this function, this might change later. So that will break your code. So you don't want to do that, right? So always make sure that you're calling. Um, I mean, you don't have to even make sure because this static keyword doesn't allow you to, like even if you import lightsgpio.h, um, this function will not be exposed there. So, and that is the point of this static keyword, but I will get to it later. Um, but this was kind of relevant content that I wanted to talk about. So you can split your code to multiple files and have another file with some functions in it. And I told, I showed you how you can um, run that, uh, basically passing all the files. Right? So how's the tutorial so far? Oh, you have a question? So is the dot h, library? Is, dot h is a header file. Yeah, so for every .c file, you will have a .h file. So if other people want to use your code, they will import the .h file. And then the compiler knows how to like import this stuff. But, so the, the .h, so it has code in it though? It only has declarations. It doesn't have the body of the function. Oh, okay. So right? You, you so like say goodbye function. is merely a declaration. You don't, you don't see the curly braces and also like the rest of the function. So how is that different from the library then? So library isn't it just like functions and stuff that you can call in the code? So library is at your actual code. Okay. So where your actual where the actual code that executes is going to be in the library. Well, I mean, like I mean, like in terms of like importing, like because you can you can do dot like sd like dot h there. Yeah. Dot h, dot h, those are all libraries, right? These are all libraries. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, um, for example, actually, let's go back to Midnight Sun. So in, let's actually just look at the main file in lights. These are all the libraries that I'm including, that I'm using, right? So I separated them. So these are all the kind of like files that I wrote that are specific to lights. You can see that they all start with lights, right? And then these are all the files that are the rest of the code base. So these are generic functions that I'm using. For example, I want to put the board to sleep, make it wait. I can use wait. Um, I want to log things. I use the logging library. I'm using interrupts. I'm using GPIO. I'm using can. For all of them, I include the corresponding libraries. Right? So that's how it works. Does that make sense? All right, awesome. So if you take a look at, for example, can.h, this only includes declarations. These are like these type defs are uh, type declarations. So you don't see get, uh, for example, you're saying, what you're saying here, I'm going to get the structs too, but basically what you're doing here is saying that I can define a new type called can storage, and then it can contain an FSM, which is another type that's declared somewhere else. It can contain, contain TXFIFO, RXFIFO, ACK requests. So all of these stuff um, are basically bundled together into one type, right? And uh, this uh, file doesn't actually include any code that will run. It only tells you what those declarations are. Sorry. Is a struct the same as a class in C's case? Uh, pretty close, but not exactly class. Because C is not an object-oriented language. Right. Right. So you can't just do like class something and then create that object. But you can, however, um, create structs, and structs can hold <coughs> um, functions and also values. Right? Mm -hmm. So the way you use it is exactly like an object. But you, you don't explicitly have objects. Right? But you can instantiate them. You can do a whole bunch of stuff. The way you do it is different. It's more low level. So as a programmer, you are actually like implementing some of the object-oriented uh, behaviors of object-oriented language in C manually. Because C is very low level. It's super fast, super powerful, but at the same time, you know, like objects are heavy. For every object creation, your language is doing a whole lot of stuff behind the scenes. 
But in C, C is like really bare bones. So you know you only work with data. But you can still, how, however, achieve objects. And I will explain why. For example, can storage here is an object that stores all the information that you need to use can. So this is an example of an object. Sorry. So is that why, like, is that why you see as a C++ for the storage <coughs> and stuff? Because the microcontrollers don't have that much storage space? You have to keep it low? Yeah, yeah. So memory allocation is something that we have to care about, too. Um, right now, our microcontrollers are pretty, uh, they're like, they have a lot of memory for us. Um, so it's not the case that, you know, you are actively thinking about memory allocation and like how much memory you're dealing with. So the highest cap is like pretty high. Um, however, in embedded systems in general, you do care about storage and, you know, how much memory you have in your system. All right. So, um, I explained that. I went through a lot of stuff. Okay, build system. So it's a pain to manage your libraries. Um, so for example, you can see that like I added one more file and my command already became like five different commands, you know, string together, right? It's a pain to basically do this every time by hand, which is why we have something called a make file. Right, um, this directory doesn't have make file because I what I just created this directory for you guys to like show you stuff. But if you go to, for example, again to Midnight Suns code, the make file here is like a long uh, file that contains all of those rules and regulations that happen when you are compiling your code. Right, so. In Midnight Sun, um, we have set up our build system so that when you guys create a project and you just want to run it, it's super easy, it's super seamless. You don't have to think about all of these stuff. Um, and you don't have to run your program doing like GCC, hello, blah, 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 <laughs> dash O, run it, and then it doesn't work and all that stuff, right? Um, so I'm going to actually make the same hello world program in our case, so like in our uh, Midnight Sun code base. Right, and I, over there I can explain all a lot of cool, cool stuff that I can do. If we did this software, like the one on one for the compiler, is that the stuff we downloaded? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So, you guys, if you don't know C and Bash and Git, you can't really use those tutorials, which is why I'm doing these videos. And these stuff, in general, just like teaching programming is much easier through um, kind of videos and just speaking about stuff than to you know having you guys go through like 60 pages of documentation. So, you know, I feel like this will be a good way. And I am recording it so you can you guys can always reach back and you know it's not lost effort because whoever new joins, I can just point them to these videos. So it's good. Um let's see. So now um, this is actually I'm going to follow exactly what we do in our software 101 tutorials. So we run all of our code inside a virtual machine. So later on, I will have another tutorial on like how we are doing stuff in a virtual machine and why we use a virtual machine. There's like a lot of benefits that it gives us. Um, I will explain it later. Because right now, I just want to keep this tutorial specific to C. Um, so the way it works is pretty easy. You do vagrant SSH. Um, let's see if the box is up. Hopefully it is. It's not. I do vagrant up. And then that will bring up my virtual machine. So some of you guys may have already gone through this tutorial, um, or like this part, because it's online. Uh, all right. So it takes a while for the uh, machine to boot up, but it's not that long. You guys will see it. Access the microphone. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> really? Why is terminal accessing microphone? Why'd you say okay? I don't know. <laughs> I usually just say okay. Does that mean you weren't recording the whole time? This like means audio? No, no, no. It's still recording. I hope. 